take over with the actual um, kind of product part, and at the end we'll have a Q and A for if any questions pop up. You can also write uh, write them in the chat section, and we can address them during the session as well. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we have this kind of time slot reserved at the end for questions too. Uh, so yeah, just a, a quick overview of Zebra BI. Uh, so we started in 2014, um, and you know, so this has been is our seventh year in operation now, um, and we went from just basically having a, a tool in Excel to providing some of the most powerful visuals for both Excel and Power BI to um, power data-driven management in companies basically across the globe. Uh, so prior to founding Zebra BI, um, our CEO, Andre Lapainem, he uh, spent, you know, he was a consultant, so he spent the last two decades, if I'm not mistaken, just creating financial dashboards. And he was also a founding member of the IBCS standards, so the highest standards for corporate informational design. And of course, naturally, our, visual, our visuals fully comply with IBCS standards and will continue to do so in the future. Um, and... Uh, on top of that, early last year, yeah, so early 2020, we also went through a rigorous technical audit and have been certified by Microsoft as well. So this is on one side a really good security guarantee, but on the other side also enables the uh, is a kind of an enabling factor for unlocking all functionalities and being able to provide a more enhanced experience. Um, and we currently have over 800 uh, enterprise clients, so that you know, um, basically over kind of thousands of business analysts just creating reports with Zebra BI, as well as 10,000 tens of thousands business um, um, uh, users just actively looking at those reports. And the question that we very often get is, what companies we work with? You know, who do you work with? Uh, so I think the easiest way is to just provide some names that that you might be familiar with. Um, and it's not the idea to <laughs> brag about it, but it's more to just, you know, show you that by the time that we signed the contract with uh, Philips and, and I know, uh, PwC, Swarovski and so on, we had to go through some very extreme testing on their side as well. So not only on the code itself, but our infrastructure, security audits, financial audits, and we passed that with flying, co uh, flying colors. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't be able to implement Zebra BI at those companies. So I really hope this instills some level of confidence in everybody here that you know some big names find us a, a reliable and trustworthy partner, and uh, you might do the same. Um, now I would actually leave the word to um, Tina to go into it and show you what can be done with Zebra BI. So um, Tina, the floor is yours. Okay, Nina, thanks a lot for this introduction uh, and uh, yeah, hello everybody uh, and thanks for joining today's session. So my name is Tino Zimic and I'm Business Intelligence Consultant at Zebra. Um, so I'm sure you heard a lot about the different aspects of, of business intelligence and uh, data science and things like that today. Um, what we are going to show you on today's session is, is um, let's say more strictly focus on the data visualization, um, especially, you know, how to create impactful and good looking reports. So, um, yeah, you are probably all aware that, uh, you know, yeah, of course, data driven culture within companies is very important, um, but, you know, reporting is, is one very important element of this. And many times in the companies, you know, there, there are struggles um, in order how to standardize reports, how to create, um, you know, impactful and understandable reports for end users um, in order that they are used uh, by end users and hopefully that they can help you um, drive business decisions within your company. As Nina mentioned, so our software is certified by Microsoft and IBCS reporting standards. So IBCS reporting standards are, I would say, we strongly believe this is the best way how to visualize your data because it brings clarity and consistency to your reports. Um, this might sound like a simple thing to do, but in reality, it's quite challenging. And we see a lot of companies struggle with this. 
and this is something that Zebra addresses. So um, yeah, let's let's look at a couple of examples uh, of Zebra visuals. So um, I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully now you see my desktop, and you know essentially um, essentially you know. We are a big fan of Power BI. Uh, it's a great platform. You know, even the latest Gartner study kind of puts it as a, as a leader in its own category. But um, where we do believe it does lack that final final missing piece is uh, you know advanced visualization. And this is this is kind of the gap that we are trying to address with Zebra BI. So let me first maybe show you a couple of examples of our visuals just so that we get like a better understanding of, of um, our solution. OK, maybe I would start with this page right here. So this is like an overview page of a sales dashboard. And you can see a couple of examples of Zebra BI visuals. So we are having two visuals, um, ZBI tables and ZBI charts. Of course, we choose charts when we want to ser um, show certain trends through time. And we usually go with the tables when we want to show some kind of split by categories, regions, sales channels, segments, and, and things like that. So that would be kind of the main distinction. And um, what you can see straight away, you know, there is not like 15 different visuals and uh, 15 different colors. So these are all things that kind of distract your attention from what really matters. Uh, instead of that, what you can see here is basically just green and red color so um, we can easily associate green color with something good you know a good performance and the red color with something bad uh, you know a warning sign or something like that so you know when you look at the dashboard like this you can immediately see you know where your performance is good or bad and and based on that you can you can easily take some kind of business decision okay and let me show you just a couple of features so uh, you know, a lot of things can be done right on the visual itself. So let me maybe first start with the charts. For example, you can do things like apply an axis break just by clicking on the axis uh, in order to see like your business dynamic a bit better if there's not a lot of difference from month to month. You can also control, for example, how labels are being displayed just, just by clicking on the visuals. You can do, of course, exactly the same for the difference highlight, which is also like a slightly unique feature because it actually shows you a growth on a year level and um, there is also chart sliders so you can actually switch between different predefined charts within the visual so basically i can i can switch between four different charts and all of them are predefined uh, pre-designed um, so you know it's up to you to just click on the button and select uh, whichever chart you find the most appropriate for your use case. Um, and then the other free visual are tables. So this one is more like a top level visual to show you uh, the performance of your top level KPIs. Then we have a bit more detailed visual, which is uh, split by groups so that you can see how each of your business group um, is performing um, and um, on the right, uh, sorry, on the last visual, we also have a split by a certain product categories. Even though the visuals look kind of a similar, they do have some specifics um, and this is, you know, because there are a lot of different uh, options for customizing your visuals to, to kind of uh, um, visualize the data that you want um, to, to kind of uh, highlight. Okay, so if we look at this one, you see that uh, almost all the visuals are comparing your actual data to some kind of comparison measure. That could be a plan, that could be a forecast, or even, I don't know, a rolling average, or basically whatever. But that's something that we would strongly encourage you to do, because putting your data into the perspective is something really important. Um, so what I mean by that, if I go back to this chart and maybe remove my comparison, which is previous year in this case, I just get a simple bar chart, okay? Um, and from this chart, you know, I can see that we are having like a spike in sales for the last three months, but I simply don't know if these numbers are good, if they are bad, 
Are they better than previous year? Are they better than planned? We simply don't know. And uh, by including comparison measure, uh, you get you get this additional perspective that can help you understand what's your performance. And we can see that you know it's 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 better than previous year. It's better for almost 17%. So this can like help you understand your data uh, better. And we do have a lot of uh, let's say useful solutions for some kind of variance comparison. Um, okay, be, before moving to the actual examples, uh, let me just quickly touch this this visual here. So here, uh, yeah, we also included so-called uh, report page two tips. So the, here, essentially, we are including a visual from different reporting page that is being displayed on the visual just by putting your mouse on top of a different categories, which of course then filter the data in the visual. And in this case, we added you know, regional perspective to see what's the performance uh, on a certain countries. And here you can immediately see that, you know, your overall performance is it's quite strong below the plan, mainly due to bad performance in Austria and also Canada and China in, in this example. And here on the last chart, you know, of course, the two tips still works, but in this case, it is filtered based on the products. And here we're using slightly different visualization, so-called waterfall chart, um, which is maybe useful to, to see like your total impact and, and how your variance is structured. Okay, so that would be like short demonstration just so that we get like a basic understanding of how Zebra BI visuals look like. Um, now, let's actually build something from the scratch. So I will first start with the tables. Okay, yeah, by the way, so Zebra visuals uh, are so-called custom visuals. Um, since we are certified by Microsoft, this means that um, you can import our visuals. Uh, you can import our visuals from the app source, Microsoft app source. Um, in some cases, you can also choose so-called import visual from a file and import them here. But essentially, you will get the Zebra BI visuals just like any other visual in Power BI. Um, so when you want to build something, you just simply yeah, click, click, click on the visual uh, in order to get uh, Zebra visual on the reporting canvas. And now let's let's build something. So first, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add one dimension in my case business unit and one measure which is ac that stands for actual sales now if i look at my chart um yeah nothing special so far so here we can see a simple sales uh, by business unit but now you know let's let's make this a bit more interesting a bit more analytical so let's add our first comparison measure which in this case would be plan okay so Maybe yeah, before I add this one, just a, um, just a short explanation regarding the fields in the visualization pane. So you have categories and groups, which are, let's say, rows and columns. In this case, they are just named slightly different. And then you have a couple of dedicated placeholders like values, previous year, plan and forecast. And these one are designed for adding comparison measures. And in this case, I will add my plan measure to my plan placeholder. And now if you look at the visual, you know, there are a lot of new things here. So for example, once I added a plan, you know, Zebra created two additional comparison measures for me. Okay, so this is delta to plan, meaning the absolute variance and also the relative variance in terms of percentages. So what, what's, what's going on um, um, in terms of comparing actuals to, to plan um, from a relative point of view. Um, and now maybe let's add even one additional comparison measure. So in this case, I also have a previous year here. I will drag and drop this one here. And now you see, I got even two additional comparison points. Okay, and now, you know, I understand my data much better because I can see, you know, my performance comparing to the previous year and to the plan. Now, if I want to, you know, get to know my data even better, I can do a couple of things here. For example, I can simply apply a sorting just by clicking on the column name 
And now you see, I am more focused on the variance. And now I see my best performing units at the, on the top and the kind of at the bad units at the bottom. So this, you know, you can really, really, uh, really quickly filter out, uh, you know, distinction between the units uh, in terms of performance. I can do the same for a plan. So these are my worst performing units compared to a plan. And I can immediately see which those units are. Okay. And this is like, simple just by clicking on the column. You can also do a couple of different options right on the visual. So for example, you can just simply drag and drop the columns if you want to change the sort order. So just, just by doing that, um, yeah, simply drag and drop the columns and um, they will be adjusted accordingly. Uh, also, additionally, you can do like a lot of different formatting options. So for example, I can switch between different chart types and uh, you get to this menu by clicking on this arrow in the in the column here. And you can switch between different chart types. So maybe in this case, I would decide to show my variance with the waterfall chart, uh, which kind of shows you, you know, continuative way of how, how your data is distributed. Um, so how your variance is distributed. And here you can see, you know, where, where is the kind of a negative gap, you know, where is the positive gap coming from and, and, and things like that. And if you would prefer, you can also, of course, use them to just display them as a simple number. So all these things can be adjusted here. Um, of course, you have additional formatting options like applying a background color, boldness, um, border color. You can even switch between different calculations. So by default, you will always have comparison between your actual data and your plan data. But you know, if you add two comparison measures, then Zebra will kind of predefine all the possible calculations. So for example, I can also decide to, 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 to display, you know, plan versus previous year comparison. If, if this is something that I would be interested in. And you can immediately see a slightly different uh, design here. And all, all the features, you know, that I'm showing right now, this is totally aligned with IBCS reporting standard, <clears throat> which again is a set of rules how data should be visualized. And for example, if you, if you know these standards and see a chart like this, you can immediately, you know, understand that this is not uh, actual versus plan, but rather plan versus previous year comparison. Of course, you can also rename this column and maybe write something like, I don't know, plan uh, versus previous year in order to be more um, descriptive. Um, okay. The, maybe what I would like to do here is also, you see, I have three different columns, my actual data, previous year and plan. And maybe I want to also show my actuals in, in, in the chart. So I can simply apply a chart here. Now I have my actuals in the black bar, in the empty bar in the background is the plan. And previous year is kind of a mark with this uh, arrow uh, marker here. If I put my mouse on top of it, then of course you will see the numbers um, right there. But now since I have all three series on this chart right here, maybe I want to hide this column. This is again something that you can simply do. Just click on the column and apply hide column. And now I have, let's say, a fully visualized reporting page of my main business units um, compared to plan and previous year. OK, but this is still, let's say, quite a simple example. Maybe let's make this a bit more interesting by including even additional dimensions. So I will bring division also to the visual. Well, like here and you know once I do that visual will automatically create hierarchy for you so now I can do the drill down I can expand and collapse the the, the categories um, and you know basically it's up to me to decide if I want to see data more in details or not uh, and yeah this is this is like a really simple way how to create this um, and you know probably a lot of you are report designers i guess you often are faced with the dilemma should i you know use the charts or should i use the numbers sometimes your end users prefer the charts sometimes i mean the other users prefer numbers 
And it's kind of a hard to cover all those things. Um, usually you need to create either a two reporting pages or two visuals and things like that. Um, well, the good news is that even on the tables, you have this chart slider function, and here you can actually switch between two different views. Okay, so, you know, it's up to you. You can, you can, you know, create two different approaches, one with visuals and the one with just plain numbers, and then users can switch between those two different views uh, right on the visual, and you don't have to create two different pages or two different visuals or, or something like that. Um, Maybe one additional feature that is also useful for organizing report. So let's say uh, I have limited reporting space here. And if I look at my sales data, I can see that, you know, top five, top six, maybe top seven, top eight units are generating majority of sales here. And then I have, you know, a couple of units that don't generate much at the bottom. And maybe, maybe I want to focus more on this one that generate majority of sales. So, you can you can control this by including so-called top end uh, or even top bottom uh, function here. So you can simply do the right click on the visual, and now you will get like this this pop-up menu. So let's activate the top end feature, and let's say in this case we want to filter our uh, elements based on the actual measure, and to just display top eight elements, for example. Okay. Now, if you look at the visual, so top eight elements are being displayed here, and all the other not so relevant elements have been grouped together into so called others category. Okay, so now I can focus on, on the best performing units. And at the same time, you know, I didn't leave out anything. So, you know, all those units are grouped here, so I can still see the total performance. But yeah, maybe I don't focus that much on, on this one. And since I have less elements here, maybe I can now choose to, this, to, to make this visual smaller like this and put it on top and maybe have um, additional uh, visuals below, okay? And as you probably see here, so um, the layout does adjust automatically. So this is one, I would say, quite distinct feature of Zebra, you know, based, based on the kind of a size of the visual, Zebra will automatically adjust uh, the fonts and, and, and even the, how data is being displayed. And regarding top end, yeah, one less feature, you can then control how many elements is being displayed just by clicking on these arrows right here. So it's really simple to, to control how many elements do you want to display just by clicking uh, right here. Okay, so before we go to the charts, let's make this a bit more um, advanced, detailed. So before I show you and include additional dimension, let's just make this one a bit more detailed. So I will include division here and I will also include a group here. Okay, so now if you look at the visual, things are much more um, detailed with a lot more information because now I am looking at the data on three different levels. Uh, and I can simply again expand and collapse to in order to get the certain detailed level that I want just by clicking on these expand and collapse buttons. And so far I've been only adding um, additional dimensions to the rows. Now, you know, let's maybe add also a time perspective to the data. So I added quarters into the group placeholder. And now if you look at the rows, so everything that was designed before is now done on the quarter one level and quarter two and, and so on. I can simply, you know, scroll and see a lot of details for each quarter. But, you know, since I have a lot of data here, maybe I want to make uh, this visualization slightly different. So let's say I want to switch this way on back to the rows and let's say I want to hide relative variance. So I will just click here and select hide from all groups. I will do the same for this one right here. And now I have, you know, data just for the um, absolute uh, variance. And I can make this one even more interesting by adding additional um, time dimension. And now I have hierarchy also in my columns. So I can collapse quarter one, I can collapse quarter two. 
And let's say I want to focus on the quarter three. Now I see data even more in details. So I can see the data for July, for the August and September and, and, and so on. And again, if I want to look just at the numbers, I can switch to different view and have this in a more compact view, maybe something like this. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make, you know, you can use the visuals for something very top level, like, uh, you know, a couple of KPIs and that's it. Or you can put a lot of details on the visuals and then, you know, use this visual, let's say like some kind of super powerful pivot table also with visualization included. Okay, so um, let me now also jump to the charts and show you a couple of examples with, with um, chart visual. So as mentioned before, uh, charts, we usually choose the charts when we want to dis display some kind of dynamic uh, through a certain time period. Um, and for this purpose, I will add my first time dimension, which is month in this case, and I will add my first dimension. And again, we have a simple, simple chart here. And as mentioned before, we don't know that much of data here uh, because we don't have comparisons. So we simply don't know what these numbers mean. But again, let's make this, uh, let's add some comparison measure and make this a bit more interesting. So you see, as soon as I add my first comparison measure, Zebra will automatically switch to, you know, um, some kind of comparison view. So I will also include my previous year. And now, you know, if you look at the chart, you have four additional comparison points for, for absolute and for relative variance. As shown before, you know, you can switch between different predefined charts right on the visual. So these are area and line chart. This is waterfall chart. And this one is, let's say, integrated variance chart. And now, you know, look at this responsive layout. So you know, Zebra will automatically adjust based on the size of the visual. Um, so if I have a lot of space and make it a big visual like here, Zebra will calculate four additional series. Now, if I start decreasing the, the size of the visual, you know, you see layout is uh, adjusting automatically. So now, now the comparison has switched just to plan comparison. If I make it even smaller, now, you know, the absolute variance will kind of a jump uh, into the bar chart and create so-called integrated variance chart and relative will still be on top. But if I make it even smaller, now it will be just now it will be just uh, integrated variance chart. OK, so again, um, really simple way how to visualize reports. You just add the measures and then Zebra basically will adjust everything according to that. OK, and this is really like time saving and, and easy to use uh, uh, for for your reporting. And now let me show you one last feature, so-called small multiples. I don't know if you are familiar with this um, data visualization approach, but small multiples essentially you know, um, are created when you add even additional um, dimension into your data. So I will add my business unit that we were uh, analyzing with the tables in my group placeholder. And as soon as I did that, you see, uh, essentially, the um, essentially separate chart was created for each business unit. And what I can see here now is development from January to December for each of my business units. And also, if you if you look at this picture, you can see that, for example, baby care is proportionally bigger and wearables uh, are okay, sm slightly smaller, but I guess second largest. Um, this is due to the scaling. Okay, so maybe I didn't touch this one enough, but scaling this is like really important part of data visualization but it's often uh, missed or neglected by other BI reporting tools. Uh, but definitely not in Zebra visuals because we kind of put this uh, kind of in the center of our product. You know, the appropriate scaling does put your data in the right perspective, otherwise it can be uh, misleading. But yeah, in this case, for instance, you can immediately see which is your best performing unit, which is the second best and, and so on. And then, you know, at the end you have some smaller units. And even here, if you notice, you have this so-called others group. 
So you can also do this top M functionality also on small multiples. So you can actually control how many elements you want to display just by clicking here. And basically the charts will also be grouped together. And also, for example, if you want to see a certain unit more in details, like speakers, you can just simply click on this element and you will get, you know, a focus mode pop up window with uh, like additional details in your data. And immediately you can see where your performance is better, where it's worse and, and things like that. So much more insightful than, let's say, uh, than the, the standard approach to data visualization. And all the other features like chart slider or axis break or, you know, um, labeling options, all of this works perfectly fine uh, also in, in the case of small multiples. So this is fully integrated. Um, okay, that would be also uh, from, from my side uh, regarding the charts. Uh, before we actually go to the Q&A, I would also want to show you a couple of examples from financial reporting. So this is also one, one of the areas that we do pay a lot of attention to because almost every company needs to have some kind of financial reports, um, including, including your companies. Um, you know, traditionally a lot of reports were done in Excel. Um, with, with reporting tools like the Blue and Power BI, of course, there, there, there are some additional possibilities. But I would say financial reports are still quite hard to do because they are specific in, in, in a couple of um, senses here. So let me maybe show you a couple of features that we developed in Zebra. First, let me maybe show you this approach. So actually, you can switch between let's say the three most common financial reports, PNL, balance sheet and cash flow, right on the visual. OK, so I'm basically clicking on the slicer and I'm switching between different reports here. OK, so, so this is, um, let's say, a bit different approach to, to, to data visualization to have everything on, on one visual. Then uh, what we are using here is so-called vertical waterfall chart. Uh, in order to see how our net income is being structured. And with charts like this, we can see um, kind of a, the structure of, of our profit. So we can see, for example, what is revenue adding to, to the entire uh, profit. Then we can see the costs. But costs, you know, by default would be displayed something like this. So you would have costs. But now if I look at the chart, they are actually increasing my total revenue, which of course doesn't make sense. We all know that costs are kind of a so-called bad KPI. And that's why you need to apply a certain feature that's called invert. And you can simply do that by right clicking on the element and apply invert option. And now if you pay attention to the waterfall chart, so you know the bars are adjusting based on your selection. And now this calculation actually works correctly. And then we have total gross margin, which by default would, would be displayed like this. But again, that doesn't make sense because this is not just an element that would add to your total revenue, but it's a result. So I need to display it as a result. And now it will be changed in the right way so that you receive the, the correct waterfall chart here. Um, and also, for example, now if you look this logic, so these are revenues and uh, actuals are actually below the plan and are marked with the red because, you know, it's, it's not a good thing to be below the plan in terms of revenues. But now if we look at the costs here, for example, so here we are actually again below the plan, but it, they are marked with the green color because in this case, since we are dealing with bad KPIs, it's, it's kind of a, the reverse logic. So if we are having lower cost than expected, this is a good thing. And this formatting, you know, takes this into the consideration so that everything is formatted in the right way. And let me show you one last feature here, so-called uh, formula calculator. Okay, so, you know, Sometimes, especially in the financial reports, you just want to maybe add a certain row to, to create 
some kind of simple calculation to see the percentages or difference or, or something like that. You know, in Power BI, then you would need to go back to your data source, maybe change um, data on the source side. Maybe you would need to do some extra DEX formulas and things like that. But we develop a simpler solution for this one. So let's say I want to show my gross margin, which is here 15 millions. Um, let's say I want to display this one as a percentage. So I will simply do the right click again and select add formula. And now you see at the at the top uh, a formula bar has appeared and now I can actually create uh, a certain formula here. So first I will give it a name. Let's call it gross margin percent. And now let's write a simple calculation for this one. So in this case, it will be gross margin. And as soon as I start typing, the zebra will kind of uh, recommend the fields for me, divided with revenue. Okay, so this is our simple formula. And now I could add this one, but I could also do a couple of formatting options. So I will select this one, which means display it as a percentage. I will make it bold, italic, and I can also change the color. Let's say we want to display it in green. So I will click save and add formula. And now if you look at the visual, well, we actually added a new element right, right within the visual. Okay, so I can see my gross margin percentage. I can see my gross margin for plan, for the actuals. I can also see the difference, which is 2.3 percentage points. And, you know, this is like a really simple way how to include additional elements. I could also do like, uh, you know, all kinds of different things here. But um, yeah, it's definitely time time saving feature, um, you know, compared to like going back to your data model and things like that. And one last feature, maybe you've been wondering what are these markers doing here? So one, two, three, what, what exactly is this? Well, this is, this is um, also one new feature, so-called linked comments. Okay, so traditionally comments are important because sometimes you want to get your business message across to the end users. And traditionally, you know, comments were written in the top row in PowerPoint reports. But since dashboards are usually dynamical, you know, this might not be, not be the best approach because, um, you know, you can have like 100 or, or even more different combination in the dashboard, but then you have one row that just, you know, describes one business event. Uh, so which, which is kind of a, not the best way to go with dashboards. So the idea here was how to make this dynamical and um, the solution for this, again, this is aligned with IBCS reporting standards, to have so-called dynamic uh, markers, which indicate kind of a, the business event that you are describing. And then you just need to put your mouse on top of it in order to see the comments. Okay, and here I can see explanation of my business event. And now if I put my mouse uh, on, on the second comment marker, I will have, you know, a different explanation for different business events. And that goes the same for the third option. And for example, if I now switch from March to April, uh, you see comments positions have changed. The fourth comment has appeared here and, you know, a different explanation here um, for, for, for each comment here. So, so the, the point here is the comments become, become dynamical and easy to use by end users since all they need to do is just put a mouse on top of it. Um, okay, that would be kind of a short demonstration of Zebra BI from my end. Uh, maybe before we go to Q and A's, so just one additional remark from my side. More or less everything I was showing today was, was just right on the visual. So, you know, doing things right on the visual. We believe this is a more user friendly way how to do it. Uh, it's also quicker. Um, but of course, there are a lot of different detailed customizable options that you can apply in the settings menu. So we didn't go into details, but you know, there's a lot of different customizable options like font size, color, uh, row, height, uh, you know, a lot of different options that you can do um, here. 
Um, just so that you, so just so that we let you know that you know even more detailed customizable options are possible. But at the same time, there's a lot of things you can do right uh, right on the visual, um, uh, which I would say it's 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 uh, beneficial for report designers because it helps you create a report uh, much much faster. Okay, so that would be all regarding uh, my presentation of Zebra Visuals. Um, yeah, now I would ask you to let me know if you have any comments, perhaps. Uh, I didn't ch check the chat section, but... Yeah, we didn't receive any questions in the chat. Um, we did receive a comment that it's very useful, so thank you, Zinko. Thanks for this. Um, but yeah, definitely. If anybody has, you know, uh, any questions that popped up, or or if, even if it's something that's more connected to your own specific case, um, please don't hesitate to to ask. You have Tina now here live, so he's able to show you that on um, an example as well. Otherwise, you can always write to us on support, and we'll um, we we will answer there as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have any absolutely. Questions? Feel free to ask us anything. Uh, maybe you can also like share your impressions. Um, do you find it useful? Maybe for your daily work, uh, are you having like problem with data visualization with your companies and things like that? Um, yeah, feel, feel, feel free to share anything. Since Tina, we also have about 15 minutes left and if there are no questions, do you think we can look at something that we might not have mentioned in the session right now, some other examples or some other useful tips and tricks, something like that, to, to utilize the time that we have left? Yeah, maybe, maybe we can have a look at maybe a couple of a bit more detailed examples. Um, so yeah well maybe yeah maybe one thing i didn't show here is our so-called segmented charts so yeah well maybe here are just a couple of examples this again is from financial reporting um, this one looks quite similar as the one we saw on the first page you can actually for example just put your um, monthly and year-to-date comparison in the filter and kind of a switch between between different uh, kind of a reporting points, you know, sometimes you want to focus on the current month, but at the same time, you also want to have like entire year perspective so that you are always aware if you are aligned with your year and goals and things like that. So this is this is like something we would also recommend you to use in your reports. Um, then additionally, you know, maybe it makes sense to show you this page right here okay because here we are using um, a bit more um, let's say unique charts uh, they are so-called segmented chart and maybe maybe i will switch to this view okay so what you can see here is a slightly different different chart okay so you can see first couple of months here so from january to september uh, and then we have a slightly different formatting for the last three months. And the idea here is, and this is like a typical case in almost uh, all companies when, when, when looking at the current year data, you are having your actual data to a certain point and you have a plan for them. But then, you know, usually somewhere, I don't know, in the, at, at quarter one or quarter two, you are starting to do a different forecast or some kind of, um, you know, um, tailored targets or something like that. And, you know, if you include all three measures, the Zebra will automatically detect this and actually do the comparison between your actual data and plan up to the point when your actuals are available, in this case from January to September. But once actual will no longer be available, Zebra will actually automatically switch to plan versus forecast comparison. Okay, and it will it will kind of a, do the different uh, design here. But you then you also have a comparison. You know what was planned, what was being forecasted. Did we need to like boost our numbers? Did we need to decrease them? And you can see this uh, like 
all this information can be saw on the visual. So you can see your, you know, actual comparison, and then you can see like forecast for the future. Um, um, uh, so yeah, you can see also the forecast for the future, and you know maybe maybe area charts look even better in this case. Um, but yeah, you you can do it like this. Also, maybe one additional um, feature you can do here. So for example, let's let's look at our revenue. Okay, so you can see that everything that is above. Uh, Sorry, be below below the line. Maybe I need to just check one thing here. Okay, so this one is not an invert. But yeah, the logic is the following. So since this is a revenue, and if my actuals are above the plan, maybe uh, let me just apply. So you can you can change your variance color. Okay, something like this. Yeah, well, so yeah, if we look at the revenues, so this this uh, bold line, this is actuals, and the below one are um, is this plan. And if we are above the plan, of course, this will be marked as green. If we are below the plan, then it will be marked as red. But then we have a KPI like operating expenses, you see? And now actually, if we are above the plan, it's red. But if we are, uh, you know, below the plan, it's actually green. So meaning that you need to apply an invert here and you can simply control this on each element. So uh, that would be like kind of the default view, but this one would actually be wrong. So you can just simply do the right click here and uh, apply so-called invert option here. And now the visuals look correct. This, this is especially often the case with financial reporting when you are having your revenues and, and profits and things like that, but at the same time you are having costs. And, and it can be a bit confusing if you are using native uh, visualizations for this because it's, um, it's, it's a bit more tricky to do. Um, but definitely a bit more time consuming because you would need to like create separate measures for this or even create um, yeah like complex data formulas uh, in order so that everything is done in the right way. Um, yeah, maybe one additional feature here. So uh, waterfall charts, maybe we didn't mention this one um, a lot, but you know, Waterfall charts are very useful, again, in financial reporting, but also, of course, in some other cases. Um, there is quite a lot of different options, what you can do here. So, for example, you can also create uh, multiple so-called bridge chart. And let me maybe open this one to show you. Essentially, you can have a certain subtotals within the chart, okay? so. Um, again, going back to the financial example, you could start with the revenues and then have gross margin in between and then have, I don't know, net profit at the end. So this is this can also be done. Um, you know, again, you can you can kind of switch between different uh, positions. So this one is vertical. I could, of course, switch it to, to horizontal. That's that's basically the, the default option. But if I have long labels like here, you know, I would need to make this chart bigger in order to, to see actually what 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 does it mean. And even here, you know, labels are not displayed um, entirely. Maybe it makes sense to switch it up. So let's invert this chart to show vertical charts like this. And now I can make it a bit more smaller so that my um, so that my entire categories are seen here. OK, so this is one simple feature. And this is so-called um, waterfall chart with subtotals. So again, let me show you. Um, by default, I would get, so actually, I'm using just one measure here, OK? So I am having one dimension and one measure. And by default, this chart would look something like this. OK, that, that would be kind of the plain data that you insert into your visual. OK, but now again, I can do the customization similar to what 
I shown you before on the table visual. So, you know, EBIT 2018, I know this is my starting point, uh, some kind of result, right? This is not a difference in, in performance. <clears throat> so I want to make this one as a result. Again, I can simply do the right click and click result. I can also apply it like formatting option. Let's say I want to make it blue. And then I have a couple of elements. Okay, so revenue is revenue is of course contributing, but then we have material expensive, personal expenses, and here you see the invert is being applied. So that would be the default state. You just simply apply invert, and let's also mark the EBIT as a result. And now you see now now my chart starting to make sense, but still this one this one is still you know not correctly marked as a result so i will apply this feature here and now my waterfall chart looks correct okay and now i can see my 2018 performance i can see my 2019 performance this difference highlight here will show me you know what's 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 the growth or decline so i can see that it's 5.8 case uh, which means 13.6 percentage and i can also see you know, where my performance was good or bad. So we did have increase in revenue. We did have also increasing costs, which it's not that positive, but sometimes it goes hand in hand with the revenue increase. Um, but yeah, immediately, so we can see that other OPEX, you know, here our performance was good also for the precautions, I believe, uh, and, and, and things like that. Okay. And a chart like this can really help you understand your kind of a, the total logic of your performance here. OK, so. Um, yeah, maybe maybe to wrap it up, so. Um, you know, hopefully this this demo kind of a did um, maybe let's say. Um, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Uh, kind of a <laughs> powered up self interest within you to, to look more in details of Zebra, uh, maybe how to do a certain visualization. So a couple of information before we wrap it up. So as mentioned before, you can get our visuals on the app source uh, just by simply clicking on three dots here. And now we are in the app source menu. So if I would want to import Zebra visuals, I just simply write zebra here and you will see uh, you will see uh, our visuals on the app source. Then you just click simply click add and your visuals will be added to the report. Um, you know, on our web page zebrabi.com, you can sign up for a free trial and you will get a license key that will enable you to also unlock some premium features that I was showing you today. Um, this key will be valid for 30 days, so let's say you have enough time to, to do some testing on your end. Uh, of course, if you will need some more additional time, then you can write a kindly email to Nina and <laughs> she will be, uh, I'm sure, willing to ex extend your license key uh, if you need more time. But yeah, just so that you know, you, you can test our visuals and also, you know, feel free to test uh, sorry to have a look at some other useful resources from our web page. So one of them is Power BI examples. Um, here we have a couple of reports published, including the example I was showing you today. Um, then of course we also have Help Center for Power BI, meaning Zebra BI for Power BI. But we also have a product for Excel, so feel free to also um, you know test this one out. And also maybe also that uh, something that could be potentially interesting for you are our webinars. So here we are, uh, let's say, addressing some of the common and interesting topics from from BI, especially data visualization world. You know, um, from from financial reports to comments, price volume mix. Um, you know how to create good looking dashboards and, and things like that. So. Um, you know, if you are interested more in this, feel free to, 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 to check this one out also. And, you know, last but not least, our knowledge base. This is, this is like uh, a set of useful 
articles, materials, and uh, and similar things for um, you know every anything that is related to Zebra, from like very basic things like how to you know import the visuals, how to enter the license key, how to maybe prepare your data model, but then also you know how to create uh, good looking visuals. And here a lot of Zebra features are described more in details. You will see like a presentational video. You will see the text with uh, an examples. You know how everything is made. How you create I don't know small multiples charts. How you do the top end. How you can apply sorting and things like that. So you will have the explanation and also kind of hands-on examples how to create something. And um, you know this is useful for Zebra BI, but also for Power BI in general. So feel free to have a look at these uh, materials also. OK, I believe we only have like three, four minutes. So hopefully you like this presentation. Um, Nina, I would leave it to you to, to kind of wrap it up. Sure, of course. Uh, well, thanks Nina, for that. Uh, it was, uh, I think, interesting and most of the this stayed for the whole time, so I think you caught their attention as well. Um, well, yeah, what Tina said, you know, we have a lot of supporting material on our site, and um, also if there's any questions that are not answered in those articles, you can always write to us. Um, our sales team, as well as you know, technical support, will be happy to answer. So uh, we are here to support you through this. So um, yeah, I hope this sparked some interest in Zebra BI. Um, feel free to download our trial and just test test it out a bit and see for yourself if this is something that works for you. And yeah, I'd be happy to you know um, discuss this further with all of you. Yeah, and from my end, uh, thanks a lot again for joining this session and have a nice day. Yeah. Bye bye. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye.